Hello my beautiful friends, my name is Carrie Cox. Welcome to my channel where we learn how to use our personal power to build a connection between our mind, body, and spirit. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a topic that I commonly see that has affected people who are coming in for mind, body, spirit healings within my practice. It's also a pattern that I see with twin flames and their karmic relationship, and it's all about the narcissist. If this is your first time here, please hit the subscribe button and smash that bell notification button so you can be notified when I release future videos. So today we're talking all about the narcissist. This is a common thing uh, that comes up and so I've done a lot of studying on it besides the fact that I have a narcissist in my own personal life. And a narcissist is somebody who doesn't have the ability to feel empathy and compassion for other people. They're mostly about themselves. And the sad thing about somebody who has narcissistic tendencies is that they have really suffered a lot of trauma in their childhood or in their past. And so they really are victims of some sort of abuse or trauma or wound. It does not excuse the fact that dealing with a narcissist in your life is one of the toughest things you may have to do, especially if this person is somebody that you are being forced to deal with. If it's a boss or an ex-spouse that you're raising kids with, there are certain tools and tactics and tips that you can use in dealing with a narcissist. The most important thing is, is that you are no longer in a relationship with this narcissist uh, because you probably won't be able to connect with them on a deep level. I work with many clients who have been traumatically wounded from the narcissist in your life, in their life, especially when it was a parent. It seems to be that if you were the child of a narcissist, the wounds, uh, you have a lot of childhood wounds that run really deep and come out in some inner child work. If you have an ex-spouse who's a narcissist, depending on, I have two clients right now who are females and their ex-spouse is a narcissist and either presented some sort of verbal abuse or physical abuse. So there could be a lot of abuse because a narcissist must control everything so we could be suffering from those types of wounds and triggers. And I've also seen the narcissist play out many times in the twin flame journey. It tends to be a karmic relationship for one of the twins in the past, as that is my case in dealing with a narcissist. So there's different varying degrees of narcissism, varying degrees of reasons why we have a narcissist in our life. And the reason, one of the things is, is it's, it could be a cycling pattern. So if you had a parent who is a narcissist, now you have a spouse who's a narcissist, you have a pattern that is playing out in this lifetime that is karmic. And it probably stems back from past life stuff. So that means that those types of uh, patterns and cycles you're seeing, you definitely want to heal through those so that you can stop the cycle. Because if you're getting out of one relationship with a narcissist and you're not healing that relationship, you're just going to go into another relationship with another narcissist. Because until it gets healed, until it gets recognized, it's going to continue to go through a loop and be there present in your life no matter the situation, so it becomes this pattern. The reason why um, I get often get asked because once I start realizing that the person I'm working with has had some wounds because of a narcissist in their life, I can pretty much sum up the story of what they dealt with with this uh, narcissist because narcissists pretty much always have the same story. And it's kind of interesting, like how could that be that they all kind of act the same? And it's because whatever age we were when we experienced that traumatic event is the age we get stuck at in our trauma. And so if you have a narcissist who had trauma when they were six years old, and I have a narcissist that had trauma at six years old, both of these narcissists are going to act like six-year-olds. and. 
There's different characteristics that we develop along our way through childhood, and we are developing these different parts within us through different ages. And so we can pretty much say if they had this traumatic event and they were six years old, they are now going to respond to trauma and triggers the same way a six-year-old would. So that is why most of the time when you're comparing stories with other people who are dealing with a narcissist, the stories are really all the same. And that's because the narcissist really does act all the same. So today we're going to talk about some signs that you met a narcissist or that you have a narcissist in your life. So first let's identify what exactly is a narcissist. A narcissist is somebody who has little empathy and little compassion for others. They have this need to control everything around them, everything and everyone. They carry around this sense of entitlement and they have this constant need for attention. They are more about themselves than others. And so people who are parents and who have children, you will see that they always come first. They, they always are more concerned about themselves than they are their kids. They will always put their own needs before their kids' needs. The thing with a lot of narcissists though is they are all about image. So the things they are doing in the public eye, so they're going to make it look like to their friends and family they're the perfect parent. They're gonna make it look like everything is someone else's fault. They never take responsibility for their own stuff. They don't apologize. They don't ever take blame for anything. And But they want everybody else to think that they have this perfect family, this perfect image. And so they will do everything they can to protect that image. Most of them, I'm not even gonna say most of them, I'm gonna say all of them are chronic liars. I get severely triggered by liars. I hate lying. And dealing with a narcissist, that's all they do. Everything out of their mouth is a lie. And so you never know if the truth is being told to you because they manipulate situations. And the way to manipulate people in situations is to lie about things. So they always lie. They don't have any integrity. A healthy parent teaches a child a healthy attachment style. A narcissist doesn't have a, ha a healthy attachment style, so they end up teaching the children unhe unhealthy patterns, behaviors, and attachment styles. They teach the child that the child is unsafe. So instead of providing love for the child, they teach the child that, that they need to be in fear. And that presents scars that could take a lifetime to heal from. That's how deep the wounds will run from having a narcissist as a parent. The narcissist's entire life revolves around fear and fear of rejection and ridicule. And you may not spot it right away because it's very buried and very deep within the narcissist. And until they get what they want, they are going to put their best face forward. They wear a lot of masks. So they're gonna to continue to wear a mask until they get what they want and then at some point their mask will come off. So sign number one that you've met a narcissistic person or somebody with narcissistic tendencies, it's important to recognize that we are not diagnosing people. Um, they may be anywhere on a full spectrum from mild to severe of narcissistic personality disorder, but we're just looking for character traits so that we can understand what type of person we're dealing with because when you're dealing with a narcissist, you really have to understand how the narcissist operates in order to communicate with them effectively and to, uh, well, there really is no communication with a narcissist. Let's like just totally be honest about that. So really in order to keep your sanity, you have to really understand how a narcissist operates. Sign number one that you're dealing with a narcissist is perfectionism. They have this high need to be perfect. Life has to play out exactly like they envision it because this is how they keep control of feeling safe and secure. Remember, at the core of it, the narcissist is a victim of some sort of abuse or wound. And so they're trying to maintain a level of perfectness, but that's not possible for them because most of the time they feel frustrated 
and disappointed and miserable. So they're never really happy and they complain about everything. They complain about everything and they're just not happy. Sign number two that you've met a narcissistic person is they thrive on gossip. This is how they energize themselves, by gossiping. They complain and they gossip to anybody that will listen to them. They have a victim mentality, so they're always going to come across as the victim. You can tell when you're listening to them complain about everybody else and how everything is everybody else's fault and they're never to blame for anything and life is so terrible and they never catch a break. Narcissists cannot see people as separate individuals. Everybody is an extension of them. And it's because they don't have boundaries. So they don't know where other people begin and where they end. And so everything is just an extension of them. So they could be very judgmental. And this is really gonna just depend on their own security level. To sign number three that you met a narcissist is that they are always the victim. They don't take responsibility for anything. Everything is everyone else's fault. And this is probably the hardest thing to ever deal with with the narcissist because they do do a lot of gaslighting and making you think everything is your fault and they never take responsibility for anything. They blame everybody else. They blame society. They blame other people. They blame the events around their life. And they're going to blame the people that are closest to them the most. They're going to blame the spouse, the kids, the parents. And the reason they do this is because you're less likely to leave or reject them. They think that you're there, that they can do no wrong and you're not going to leave them. So the catch-22 with the narcissist is they always want to be in control of everything, but they never want to take responsibility for anything if it goes wrong. Okay, let's talk about the fourth sign that you met a narcissist, and that is that need for control. They have this storyline in their head, and they have all these characters that are in the story, and you're one of the characters in their story, and they plan and plot this storyline out or this story out before it happens. And then when it doesn't go their way, they're highly disappointed and frustrated. And it builds a lot of anger inside of them because you're supposed to act a certain way or be a certain part in their story. And when you don't play the part right and you don't say and act the way they want you to, they get upset because they think that you are an extension of them. They don't see your individuality as your own or you as your own person. You're just a character to them. You don't have your own thoughts and feelings, and so they don't allow for that. The fifth sign that you've met a narcissist is their uh, need of entitlement. They feel like they are entitled, and this is because this is what makes them feel safe. If they feel like they're number one, they feel safe. If they feel like they're the best, they feel safe. And this is not the same as feeling confident like in a self-esteem sort of way. This is about feeling number one so that they can control everyone and everything around them. And they wanna own everything because if they own everything around them, it makes them feel more like they have power when in fact they're powerless. That is why, th that is why is because they actually somebody took their power from them. So they are almost acting like a bully to try to take their power back from everybody else to find this sense of safety. And it just isn't working for them. There's too many traumas and wounds that need to be healed there. But the problem is they will never seek out help for those wounds because they won't admit to anything being wrong with them. They don't see anything as their fault. So how are they going to do an inner journey and if you're somebody who's listening to this video because you do do your inner work and you know, you have done the inner work, then there's no way in heck you could ever be and be someone who's a narcissist because you're able to go inside and see where things are your fault. You're able to take responsibility for yourself. The last key point uh, about narcissists to help you identify if you've met a narcissist is that they are all about themselves. They, they have this need for attention and it's obvious. It doesn't matter how much you validate them, they don't feel like they're enough. So they have a tendency, because they don't believe that they're enough, that if you're in a relationship with a narcissist, they will probably always accuse you of cheating on them when you're not cheating on them. They will always accuse you of not loving them. They're always gonna make all these critical accusations of you because they 
don't believe that you could feel this way because they don't feel that way about themselves and because you're just an extension of them there's no way you could feel that because they don't feel that for themselves so there really is a lot of inner wounds and traumas within the narcissist that we do when we're dealing with a narcissist we do have to remember you're dealing with um, a highly messed up person you're dealing with somebody who needs to do a lot of healing work but they're unwilling to do the work and you can't force somebody or make them do that inner work. They have to want to do that work on their own. And so all you could do is learn the tools that you need to learn to deal with the narcissist um, when you're forced to have one in your life. And the best thing you could do is try not to communicate with them if at all possible. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope that you are I wish you love and light and strength in dealing with that narcissist. I know it's a tough road and a tough journey, but it is part of your healing process. You are meant to learn something big out of it. So heal the wounds inside yourself that the narcissist has triggered within you. Heal the patterns within you that have allowed you to become a victim to the narcissist and Find your inner strength and power and take back your power from the narcissist. Remember, they need to control everything. So if you were with the narcissist for a long time, they took your power a long time ago. Take your power back. Call it back across all time and space. I am sending you my love and my light. Have a blessed and beautiful day, my friends. Namaste.